I love it when I get home from work and I have a large package waiting for me to open. I think I know what this is. And it is. This is going to be fun to go through. How's it going, everybody? Today, looking at Warlord 4th Edition. Uh, this is the German Learn to Play set for 4th Edition, LTP. In 4th Edition, it was built kind of like a, a living card game where each pack was fixed. Uh, that means every card that you get in it is going to be in the same in every single one. Uh, as you can see down here, it MS, this MSRP for $19.99 US. I recently was able to track down, thanks to the Facebook group that I posted in my previous video, uh, a gentleman from Phoenix Interactive, which was the uh, European company that did 4th edition, printed in Germany, as you can see there. Uh, and he was selling some, you know, leftover 4th edition stuff uh, from that production run. Uh, I guess he's probably got like a, a garage or a warehouse somewhere with it all. Uh, and he had an all-in bundle that he was doing where um, after the conversion and, you, and uh, PayPal fees and shipping and handling, it wound up costing me about 400 That seems like quite a bit. We're going to go through everything that I got starting with this learn to play set not going to be opening anything uh, maybe some of the promos so we can look through that yes there were promos involved uh, it did not include any of the one through six sets uh, in fact it started with number seven and it went all the way through and these sets right here um, the big packs had two faction decks in it they are complete decks ready to play right against each other or with anything else from 4th edition. Each of these faction decks uh, came with one of each rare, two of each uncommon, three of each common. Expansion 1, Shattered Empires. This is set number 7. He didn't have 1 through 6, but in order to compensate for that, he allowed me to pick any three um, packs that I wanted. Uh, the ones that I wound up picking that were extra were these three. I probably could have selected three of the double pack ones, but I didn't want to get greedy. I felt like I was already getting a pretty good deal. And picking these, you know, I, I loved the artwork from all of these warlords. And going with this, I had a pretty good selection of factions. Uh, set number 11 here gives me Elf and Devoranian. I think it's not Free Kingdoms, uh, Elf and Free Kingdoms. I saw the red. <laughs> I immediately thought Devoranian. Uh, this one, though, is Devoranian, The Storm Awakens. And then this one, Secrets of Winterhold, is Dwarf. So I've got every faction here except for the Nothrog. But I've already opened up some 4th edition I've been able to find on eBay, and that's why I wound up going for this. I've been trying to track down 4th edition. I didn't play in 4th edition. Um, and I'm going to try and put like a running total down here in the video somewhere of the MSRP of all of these. And I'm going to try and track down some eBay prices as well. Um, still sealed. Love it. I'm going to be keeping most of these sealed just as a collector. That's why I got these extra ones so that I can, you know, have some to open up. Might do some future videos of those. Probably just going to have a pretty fun weekend with some of my friends. Um... I, I loved this bundle. Uh, it wound up costing me, like I said, 400 I got one of everything, with the exception of one through six, but I got those extra ones. Here we've got Mercenary and Chosen. Chosen was a new faction. I really didn't play any 4th edition. I've been trying to track it down. Very scarce on eBay, and when it does pop up, it's like 35 40 bucks after shipping and handling and tax for one of these decks. Uh, these individual decks, anywhere from 20 to 35 themselves as well. It's really hard to find Warlord stuff. You can still find some of the older stuff with the booster packs, where it was an actual trading card game instead of like a living card game format. Uh, but even those are starting to skyrocket. Thank you, stimulus checks. <laughs> uh, the lowest you can probably find a booster box for right about now is probably 179 
uh, and then shipping and handling and then tax and whatnot. Uh, so usually about 180 to 200 for a booster box of older sets. You can usually find starter decks and boxes of starter decks a little bit cheaper. Fourth edition is really hard to get a hold of. So feel free to go to the Warlord Card Game Facebook group. Um, just, you know, politely ask on there if you can uh, get the name of the gentleman. I'm not going to post it here on YouTube because I don't have permission to do that. Um, but I'm pretty sure he still has some left. I'm going to get up with him. Um, on my next paycheck, see if I can grab some more stuff, just to, just to have extra. It's always good to have extra. I love doing sealed decks, especially once conventions start uh, ramping up again. Uh, so here we got number seven. <laughs> I, I love this game. This is one of my first true love games. Uh, and here we have set number eight, Parts of Treachery. In this one you get Free Kingdoms and Elf. Feel free to pause these so you can read the back. Make some room up here. I've got everything lined up. Set nine. Let's look at the artwork on that. And please excuse the lighting. The, the camera's going to flicker back and forth. Um, the lighting in this room is not really good. I don't have any professional lighting. And as I move things around, the glint from the plastic is going to affect the, the lens. I have the camera pretty close down so I can get you really good views of these so any cards I show box backs you can read it clearly I want you to be able to track down all the information necessary this was the pack that you saw me open I opened that one because I knew I had this one coming in the mail as part of this package Devronian Nothrog really fun Devronian deck in this one Justice of the Black Sun and this is one of the ones that I got extra so that I had can keep this one sealed and I can open up the other And also, interesting thing I just want to point out, you can see where the uh, production quality kind of shifted a little bit. It's really neat historically to look at these things. Uh, they were using the gold strip pull tab, and then on the later ones, they did away with the gold strip pull tab. But they still have, let's see if I get the light on, they still have a pull tab on them. They just shifted over a little bit. It's really interesting to always historically look at those. And then Virtues of the Stalwart is number 12, Dwarf and the Chosen. Then after that, they transitioned over into individual decks. Uh, this is set number 13, which follows fast upon the last one we saw, which was set number 12. And from here on, they're all going to be individual decks. Uh, number 13 was Ember Winds, which was Deferonian, if I remember correctly. And these still have pull tabs on them as well. Secrets of Winterhold, which is number 14. This one's going to be Dwarf. Number 15, the Forest of Bone, which is going to be Elf. Number 16, Tales of the Ruby Rogue. Should be Free Kingdoms. Moving on down the line. Rights of the Ogre Magi, number 17. This is going to be Nothrog. And again, Nothrog was the settings version of Fork. Blood for Blood, number 18. I, I don't like how they didn't give you the faction on the side. So you just kind of have to guess. This looks kind of like Elven. Artwork with the whole bone motif. Ebon Wings, set number 19. Set number 20. Well, Storm Awakens, this one is definitely going to be Deveranian. That was one of the ones that I picked up extra, so I'd have one to open. The Mummy, this one's definitely going to be Elf. At least I'm pretty sure. It's either Elf or Chosen. Chosen was a new faction created um, either for 4th edition or a little bit before 4th edition. Uh, they were all about kind of like sacrificing the, the first and second rank fodder to summon demons. Uh, Call of the Jaguar. Set number 22. The Champion. Set number 23. 
And then set number 24, uh, the Serpent, it didn't have plastic wrapping on it. So either in the production, it, they stopped doing that. Uh, however, looking at the inside, the inside deck is sealed. So these might not actually have uh, gone out mass production to be shrink wrapped. Or these were company copies that they were going to hold on to and use for demos or internal use. I'm not quite sure, but I definitely want to try and research this a little bit more. Fist of the Golden Dragon was set number 25. Again, didn't have the plastic wrapping on the outside, but the inside is sealed. And then finally, number 26, the Apocalypse Ship, which I believe is chosen. In fact, if they have the Warlord on top, we'll be able to see. Yes, that is chosen. Chosen and Warlock. But we didn't stop there. Uh, we had all of those decks, uh, plus those three extra that I was able to select and pick up. The Learn to Play set. There were also any promos that they had left. So first up was this Vash Arosh. Looks like a full deck, probably a demo deck used for events. Um, the star down here is going to signify rare. And then you have your number count. This is card eight of however many. Love the artwork on that. Next up, there was Runa. Triangle does denote promo. Three kingdoms, the chosen, bard. Awesome, just a little mini pack of cards, but they were promos that I didn't have before, so even more for the collection. Followed by Ut Lamalamalamana. However, you would like to pronounce that. Uh, my Cthulhu Lovecraftian pronunciation is a little off right now. Utnapshitim. Um, However, you. Uh, you say it your own way, I'll say it my own way. Uh, but some decent stats here. We got 9-9, nine, nine, uh, 18 defense. Rank 7, though, the Chosen. It's an Overlord, so that makes sense. Nice stats. Again, a little mini pack there. Followed by a Phalanth Theridier. Another little mini pack. This one I'm definitely going to have to try and track down more. The Phoenix Rising. Uh, mainly because the local game store, uh, my friend the local game store, is called Phoenix Rising. So it would be nice to have like uh, probably a stack of these. Uh, just to you know, hand out, have fun with one weekend. Hey, let's do a Warlord weekend. Another sealed mini pack here. Rika O'Shea. And then we have these two, which look to be just stacked full of promos. Now I am going to warn everybody, I have no clue what is in these, but I do remember as, well, look, we got some odd cut cards in here. So I'm not quite sure what's what that's about. Can you see those right back here towards the end? Let's see if we can go right to those. See what we got. Nothing else looks out of place. Karak Urutu. Oh, this is a Dragon Lord. All right, so that's what these. Wow, Dragon Lords. Okay, Karak Urartu. We have another Dragon Lord. Morgan de Danon. I was, oh my god, I was not expecting Dragon Lords in this pack. Dragon Lord Overlords. Oh wow, that's that's amazing. It's a rogue hanging upside down. Is that William O'Connor art still? Yep, William O'Connor. Beautiful artwork, very distinctive style. And I love how everything is kind of like inverted. So all your stats are down here, and you're kind of reading it upside down while he's hanging upside down. That's amazing. Uh, one of the more iconic 
Dragon Lord images. I can't believe I have Dragon Lords. Oh my god. Aldrich von Grostl. Celine du Marguerite. 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 Yeah. Oh wow. So that, that's amazing. I was not expecting. I didn't know what I was getting. All I knew was that there was whatever promos were left. <laughs> he was going to throw them in there as part of this bundle. Oh, wow. So that, that's amazing. So I got some Dragon Lords. No Medusa Lords, but we got some Dragon Lords. That, that's amazing. I'm really glad I picked this up. Uh, and then we have just our stack of promos here. Again, the triangle down here is going to be promos. And again, I am going to warn everybody because I do know that there's some, there's like one set of infamous um, European era cards, uh, a warlord in particular. I'm going to go kind of, all right. <laughs> I am going to flip this over. Let's go off camera a little bit. All right. Just because I can't really uh, show those. Uh, yeah, they are probably not YouTube safe. But you do get two of them. Uh, Warlord collectors out there who know, um, I, I did get two of them. Uh, Anselm Bacourt. Love that artwork. You know, let me just uh, go through real quick. Because um, I believe they're... All right, so there was an action, which was part of that series as well. There was one of those. All right, that's fine to show. Uh, there were two of a belt item. And then there was one of the weapon item from that series line. Everything else appears YouTube safe. <laughs> so we can we can continue. Sometimes lauded as the cards that killed the game. Uh, but you do get those quantities, or at least I got those quantities. As the sets begin to run out, uh, and collectors get a hold of this and know about this deal and track it down. Now that one has a little bit of a weird warping issue, so I'm not sure what's going on that but that'll be easy to fix out with a press and a hairdryer iron golem two tithes black stone boulders flaming longsword the king's lady niobe's neck piece and niobe is the character in some of those actions Two of the diadems, two of the necklaces, two crowns, two amulets, Ember's fist, blade scenario, Lothian law hammer. I mean, who cannot love these names and the artwork and the style? Cerebrus. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Mercenary warlord, charisma plus three. He's a fighter and a cleric. Evil characters within one rank suffer nice to attack, AC, and skill. I'm going to have to make a deck around this. That just looks fun. You just charge him forward. Because most characters in the game are evil. I mean, the Accord lands after the, what is it, Night of a Thousand Deaths or something like that, uh, where most heroes were assassinated. Grim Steel. Two Weeping Crescents. Um, after that Night of Assassinations, and most heroes were slain, and the uh, the Dragon Lords and Medusa Lords kind of took over. There weren't many actual good and quote unquote you know alignment wise left in the realm. All right, so that that was just pack one. Man, I'm gonna have to save that. Let's put that off to the side. Let's look at pack two. All right, so we have some of the demons for the Chosen faction here. Promo versions of these. Fours. Sin Marduk. Naram Sin. Oh, we have a Stone Golem. There was an Iron Golem in the other pack. Sea Wasps. There would be a lot of names with S's. You might hear a little trillion. It's just uh, the way my teeth have formed. I kind of make a D 
distinct whistling when I use S's, so I try to use th, th with TH as much as possible. Ith Elementals, Imperial Scepter, Richter Rikus. That's awesome looking. That's a Paladin. Oh, so this one's in German. So it must have been just a German promo. Oh, no, there's an English one in there as well. All right, so we got the German and the English. That's awesome. Warren Einschlags gegen einen Gegner. Meet. I'm going to butcher that horribly, but that's just awesome. I love that you have those in there. Judge Akis. Right there. Judge Dacus. Another paladin. These would go great in a Deveranian Paladin deck. Paymaster Core. I didn't realize there were some German ones in there too. All right, so we got Flails, Nothrog's Psych. Oh, Farsat, Twin Saber, Main Gauche, Two Handed Sword, Double Bladed Sword, Collapsing Bow, Hand Axe, Black Sun Helm. Awesome. Black Sun is a uh, Deverinian Paladin Order kind of thing. This cloak, Blue Worm's Helm, Spell Book, Longbow, Shadow Token, Two Handed Sword. It's just an awesome amount of promos that you get in there. And again, all in all, this ran me about 400 after the, uh, the dollar to euro conversion. Um, PayPal fee, uh, and then shipping, handling. Not bad. Seems like a lot. Uh, but if you're, it's probably down here somewhere. <laughs> it's going to be my first time trying to edit a video like that. If you uh, keep track of the prices that are probably showing down there, you will see. But that 400 was a bargain compared to what, you know, like the MSRP would probably have been when these first came out. Just so much Warlord. Um, feel free to go to the Facebook group. Um, just ask politely for the contact information for the gentleman from Phoenix Interactive to see if he has any of these all-in bundles left. If not, I know he's going to be pleased as punch to be able to sell to either folks looking to get into the game because of the 20th anniversary that's coming up, um, or old-time collectors looking to get some 4th edition. Uh, either you just want some fresh 4th edition to open for a draft weekend or a sealed weekend, uh, or you never played 4th edition like myself and you just want to you know, have whatever is available. I'm still going to try and track down sets one through six, so I have all of fourth edition. I am not disappointed with this in the least. I opened the box, the box that came in, I was originally thinking, oh my goodness, I, I spent that much on this little box. And then when I opened it, and I started pulling out a deck, and then another deck, and then another deck, and then the promos, and oh my god, it's like, it's so much stuff. <laughs> I just imagine what we've looked like this pile like I mean Warlord <laughs>